I will read it out. These questions, uh, these questions are designed to unfold and explain your teaching. They are asked in the context of the teachings of Ramana Maharshi, with whom I am familiar from my Guru Papaji. One. There is a fundamental question, who am I? Who are you? Many Western seekers come to India looking for enlightenment as if it is an experience. What is enlightenment? Uh, I will start with the first one. And uh, is who are you? Who am I? What is the basis for this inquiry? If somebody wants to know more about oneself, psychologically, it's a valid question. Who am I? Because one has a certain uh, experiences, childhood experiences, and buried in the unconscious. One doesn't really know what they are. But one has the experience of being lonely in the midst of people. <laughs> one is prone to anger. Prone to varieties of emotions for which there are no real external situations. The same situation is, can be met with objectively. Why there is anger, certain fear over which you have no control. If I am asked to clap, I can clap. I can clap this way. I need not clap. The freedom is with me. The action is based upon my will. I do. I need not do. I can do it differently. So that's, that's will based. Suppose one is asked to be angry. I ask you to be angry. You can't be. Doesn't mean that you don't get anger. <laughs> you get anger. But not consciously. So that means there is, there is a cause for anger which lies in the unconscious. And therefore, if one wants to know about oneself more, then one can undergo psychoanalysis. Then having found out some problem being there, then one can undergo psychotherapy. What is this question? Who am I? More than that, it presupposes that there is there is one I that we don't know. Therefore, this is called, we call it as Purushartha Nishchaya. What is it that you want? You analyze. That analysis is called Viveka. That is very important, Purushartha Viveka. Purushartha means what is really sought after by people. Everybody is, everybody is a seeker. 
who is not a seeker. Somebody wants money, somebody wants power, somebody wants money and power. <laughs> and everybody wants different forms of pleasure, simple sensory pleasure, aesthetic pleasure. Who does it want? So everybody wants. So all forms of pleasure, satisfaction. If somebody wants to buy another corporation, already the fellow heads a corporation. It's not for money. It's an ego satisfaction. <laughs> the fellow has got money for generations. But he needs ego satisfaction and therefore he wants to be the head of another corporation. It's an ego trip. So it comes under karma. Money comes under artha. So through artha you have satisfaction. Money is artha. Money, power, status. It's all artha. Therefore, these are the two pursuits, very common, universal. In our uh, culture, we include one more value, one more end, that is dharma. So one should be able to conform to dharma. What will, what will not hurt another person? Do it. What do you expect of others? Related to you, what they should do, what they should not do. They expect the same thing from you. Follow that. That is dharma. Why one is not able to follow? Because of the pressure created by other pursuits like artha and karma. And therefore, one can cut corners, one can go against dharma. Therefore, we call it as a purushartha, by one's own initiative, one has to learn, grow, to conform to dharma. These are all purusharthas. Purushartha means human ends, the ends that we need to accomplish, we want to accomplish. All right. Can it change the status of being a seeker? That's where the inquiry begins. That question, can it change my status of being a seeker? I have a certain self-identity. In this self-identity, my body-mind-sense complex plays a very important role. I am as good as the body is, mind is. How much I know, what I know, what skills I have, what was my past. All these constitute my individuality. This is me. But this me is any which way you look at is limited, wanting, insignificant, in fact insignificant. See, it all depends upon the, the scheme in which you look at yourself. 
If it is a small scheme, you become very big. If what is is taken into account, the planet, Mother Earth itself becomes a pizza, not even a pizza. And there, the, the continent, the state, the country, the state, the county, the street, the house, the room, and the place wherein you are sitting. The Mother Earth itself cannot be indicated by a pizza. Yeah, this is what. <laughs> and I am insignificant, small. Whether it's only just you compare yourself to others, money-wise wanting, skill-wise wanting, power-wise wanting, health-wise wanting, can be better. Then there are other complexes, human being. Self-conscious, self-judging. Therefore, there are other complexes. Therefore, height complex, there is that. There is a, there is a lot of uh, the color complex. Then there are other complexes, features. Someone doesn't like his nose, her nose. <laughs> eyebrows. There are people who specialize on eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, others' eyebrows. <laughs> so this eyebrow complex. It's all complexes. This is a human being. Therefore, the, the situation is, I am wanting. Then, the experience is that in spite of my being a wanting person, all through lifetime, all our desires are not fulfilled. And therefore, there is no, no chance of taking myself to be a successful person. Because desires unfulfilled are more than desires fulfilled. Even you have, you are a person who is globally aware. You want the people to be different. You want the governments to be different. You want the political leadership to be more enlightened. The religious leadership to be more enlightened. All these are desires, unfulfilled desires. And some of them cannot be fulfilled. <laughs> you want more equal distribution of wealth. You want, this, you want fairness in exchange rates. We say global, but the currency is not global. <laughs> There's no parity. The earning power and the buying power should be, should be taken into account in fixing up the exchange rate. We want to have many currencies. But that's not taken into account. So 
So what you can buy here in rupees, you cannot buy the same thing in England, in Holland. What you cannot buy by your currency there, a given thing, that for the same currency you can buy here. So, there's no parity. So you want everything to be different. If you are aware of what's going on, the more you are aware, more desires are there. There are many spheres of desires. Therefore, I am dissatisfied person. Therefore, self cannot be accepted. This is me. And I can't accept myself. When I can't accept myself, the whole life is a seeking of accepting myself. <laughs> the self I am conscious of, the monkey is better off. It doesn't have a judgment. It doesn't stand in the queue for visa. <laughs> I saw in, in Chennai, in the, in the American consulate office, right in front, there would be there was a very big queue. Early morning, long queue. But there was not one Indian monkey. <laughs> they are happy being in India, correct? <laughs> Present to be a monkey. <laughs> it is not shy. It just <laughs> it's it's happy being what it is. What is this evolution nonsense? <laughs> if you tell the monkey that I am your evolute, <laughs> it will laugh at us. <laughs> Look at this fellow, the evolute. <laughs> Therefore, what I say, when you are conscious of yourself, which the monkeys fortunately don't have. <laughs> then the self you are conscious of is not acceptable. Is wanting. This is the truth. Therefore, in life I am seeking myself to be acceptable. Neither money, it's not money. Through money I want to accept myself. Through others I want to accept myself. Through the social concept of what the societal concept of what is success, I want to achieve that so that I can be accepted. But still achieving that, till I am unacceptable. Because I am limited, I am wanting, nothing will free me from being limited. No addition. <laughs> By the time this fellow reaches a goal of earning so much money, he can't enjoy it. By the time he has got all stomach ulcers, <laughs> heart problem, sugar. So he can't enjoy. Wanting. No chance to achieve. Freedom from being wanted. This is the truth. For us, this is very important, these things are understood. Before we jump upon this, who are my question? Self-non-acceptance is the issue. Self-acceptance 
is the goal. I am embellishing myself to become an acceptable self. A broomstick is always a broomstick. However you embellish it, you can have a diamond necklace around that. It's a broomstick wearing a diamond, diamond necklace. That's exactly what happens to this wanting person. No matter what he adds to himself, it's the same. Either you get rid of things or you add things, it's the same. Therefore, there is no such thing as freedom. So what we are seeking is freedom from, not who am I? That's a wrong approach. What I am seeking is freedom from being small. Moksha. Moksha from what? Freedom from what? From myself. <laughs> freedom from, not myself, from my being small. That accounts for all our pursuits. All, all pursuits, all forms of pursuit. I want to be free from being nobody. <laughs> Therefore, everybody wants to be somebody. If nothing can be accomplished, so one dyes one's hair, that's all one can do. Dyes one's hair green or blue. I have seen green hair, <laughs> people in New York. <coughs> yeah, one woman was wearing green hair, confusing me whether in New York, Manhattan, the trees are walking in the street. <laughs> so, uh, if that kind of freedom I'm seeking, this is called Purusha Nishchaya. I want freedom from being a seeker. Then it is not possible. The way I go about is not possible. Because if we are limited being, with any addition is limited. Any subtraction is still limited. Like a finite number, you add any number, it is a finite number. You minus any number, it is still a finite number. So there is no moksha. Possible. That's why people promise moksha is not here, moksha is there in heaven. That is tourism. <laughs> it's, it's a pure tourism promotion. So you come here, then you will have, you come go there, you will enjoy. Again, you will be the individual then. If you are not an individual, you are not going anywhere. <laughs> if you are an individual, you, wherever you go, you are there. Therefore, you have to deal with yourself. The smallness will not go. Therefore, there is no moksha. There is no moksha. Uh, all right, there is no moksha. Can I accept myself now? People say, you know, what cannot be cured should be endured. You can, 
you have to endure yourself and we have to endure you <laughs> both <laughs> <clears throat> Just endurance. We govern our lives with these kind of sentences. What cannot be cured should be endured. The existential philosophy. <laughs> Make hay when the sun shines. Grab as much as you can. <laughs> or the only way or maybe my conclusion is wrong. Conclusion about myself that I am a wanting person is wrong. I am wanting from a standpoint. If I look at myself through my body, through my mind, through my senses, I am bound to be wanting. I am designed to be wanting. <laughs> But the body doesn't have an eye sense. The mind doesn't have an eye sense. Senses don't have an eye sense. The judgment is, is centered on me, on I. So the source of the problem is I. The solution <laughs> of the problem is I. If I am not acceptable to myself, I have to see myself acceptable. How? Unless I am acceptable, I cannot accept myself. If I am wanting, I cannot accept myself. So the only solution out is maybe I am not wanting. The window for such a, a supposition is my own experience of my, uh, my being not wanting occasionally. I live in the same world with the same people, the same body, mind, senses, still Occasionally, I become at home with the world, with myself, I'm happy. I pick up a moment of happiness, looking at the stars, looking at the trees, looking at the birds, looking at the mountains, listening to music, or enjoying something, whatever. I feel I am Okay. <laughs> so in spite of my having all the unfulfilled <laughs> desires embedded in that very personality that is me, with all angularities, in spite of all that, I just see myself <clears throat> in a light that is the most desirable experience. So you have the experience of being different, desirably different. That's enough, that's a window through which I can make a supposition, perhaps I am that one who obtains when I am happy. It's not desire fulfilling accounts for it. Sometimes you fulfill a desire, you feel 
you feel so unhappy, you wish you were never born. Sometimes you are happy without fulfilling any desire. You don't, you don't uh, require to fulfill a desire. You see a comic strip, you are happy. You listen to a slapstick joke, you become happy. Slapstick means you need not think. Become happy. <laughs> this woman received a bunch of flowers. And there was a there was an envelope. And then she opened it, but the floor is sent. And it is from her husband who is traveling. And she wanted to see the message. The message was no. What is no? The message was no. So my husband's name is there. Message is no. In that card. She found her husband. What is it that you have written? What did I write? The message. What message? I didn't give any message. But there is message. No. No? Oh, the florist asked me, do you have any message? I said, no. <laughs> There is a message. Is there a message? Is it no? Well, no. No is a message. You laughed. At least some of you laughed. Some of you require a little more, perhaps, <laughs> to make you laugh. And I have all of them. It's easy to make anybody laugh. But then, What has happened? If you laugh, did you fulfill all your desires? A credit card is paid off. All the loan that is there on your house is all mortgage is paid off. What? Are the problems are solved? No, nothing is solved. Then you can be happy. It's a great, it's a great, uh, Yeah, a thing to really examine. It's an experience to be examined. The experience is as good as what you know about it. Experience is dumb. Dumb like a stone. It doesn't reveal anything. Just experience. You have to, you, you have to know what it is all about. I was traveling with somebody in this Indian airline from Chennai to Delhi. I was going to Rishikesh. I was in the corner seat. In the middle seat, there was a huge fellow. He couldn't fit in. And he has to remove the hand rest. Then only he could fit in. And there was a third guy also packed. I am pushed to the corner. <laughs> Little more push, I will be out. <laughs> so this is that kind of a situation. And this guy, after a few minutes, picks up a conversation with me. And I learn he's from Australia. He has got an address. He wants to meet a Swami. <laughs> so where is that IPA? 
No, I, I'm, I'm going to Rishikesh to meet a Swami. <laughs> and then he gives me an address, pulls out a piece of paper and gives me the address. Do you know this Swami? <laughs> then I, I read what is written, Swami Dayananda. <laughs> <laughs> Rishikesh, this is my address. <laughs> it is my address. <laughs> no, he doesn't know. I am Swami Dayananda. He is experiencing me. He is talking to me. He is sitting on me. <laughs> Very heavy experience for me. <laughs> dumb experience. Experience is dumb. Our whole samsara is experience. We are all experience hunters. <laughs> It is the experience of these moments of experience which are few and far between. They keep us going. Good experiences. <laughs> Acceptable experiences. Experiences in which I see myself acceptable. Therefore the world is acceptable. I live in the same good old world in which I am unhappy, in which I am searching for my acceptance. So I am, in the same world I see myself, in the light that I would like to see myself, experientially. Then again I want repeat experience, I want better experience. <laughs> These fellows always will say, you will get bliss, be capital. You are on a trip. This is called spiritual trip. <laughs> realize the self. We use the word realize for realizing interest for our investment. Or mistake. <laughs> realize the mistake. People use words, abuse words, put the people on trip to gain the experience of bliss. The problem is not lack of experience. The problem is whether the experience I seek, I have, whether that time, the experience time, the one who obtains experience means happiness experience. In that experience, the one who obtains is me and the world. We have no issues. Issue free experience. Is that true? <laughs> That I, that, that is happiness. I is not experiencing happiness. I is not different from experience of happiness. I am happiness. That is experience, centered on I. It's not an object. I see a flower. A flower is an object. And I am happy seeing the flower, and then happiness is not in the flower, or in me, it's me. That's what experience is, centered on me. Is this me? Or the other wanting me is me? Because that seems to be more lasting than this one. <laughs> Therefore, that fellow has been seeking for this self. This happy self, that fellow is seeking. Therefore, the non-happy, 
unacceptable wanting self is seeking to be this self. Very clear. <laughs> if that is real, this is only experience. For some time, it is suspended. The suspension of that wanting I is given fact. It's given to us. So that we can experience. <laughs> you cannot, if you cannot suspend it, you can't be happy. I, I, in my audience, I saw one, uh, one person. Everybody laughs. I am, sometimes I'm very jocular. And then, then, uh, then I see, as I keep talking, I see a lot of funny things. I keep telling. Everybody is laughing. This one doesn't laugh. So, this one, why doesn't laugh? There must be some reason. Then, tight lip. And all that. Laughter is inside, but nothing comes out. Therefore, there is a dental complex. It's definite. <laughs> then, at, then I thought that I should crack this person. <laughs> then I, I, I crack a, a slapstick. And then she laughs. Then afterwards she closes them. <laughs> because she committed a mistake. Because she doesn't accept the alignment of the teeth. It's a dental complex. She doesn't accept. Nobody is going to notice if she is not self-aware, <laughs> self-conscious. <coughs> and therefore, then afterwards, that means you can't be happy. See that truth. You can't be happy being one who is not acceptable to you. Dentally not acceptable. <laughs> Correct? But when she forgets that complex because it is an entertained notion, therefore it can be suspended and crack the person. And then sometimes it's gone. That complex is dropped. It's a notion. You can always drop. She drops the notion, she laughs. Afterwards, she remembers herself. Are you, you? <laughs> then she is self conscious. <laughs> this is our self consciousness, okay? <laughs> our self consciousness is meant for complexes. In fact, these complexes drive us to the solution. Maybe there is a solution. That is why you cannot stop seeking. There is a solution. Why? Because if I am a wanting person, intrinsically, then there is that sense of want can never be given up because the what is intrinsic property to an object cannot be negated, cannot be suspended at any time as long as the object is there. Like fire is hot and you cannot remove the heat and then still have fire. Not possible. Because it is intrinsic. If this limitation is centered on the self, cannot be negated. I negate in a moment of joy, therefore, maybe that is what I am. That is why nobody complains that the person is happy. <laughs> nobody comes to me complaining, Samiji. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I am too happy this day. <laughs> Nobody tells me. How will he complain? <laughs> Swamiji, hey, how will he complain? 
even complaining must be must be a there should be a method and there is a certain demeanor. Why will he complain? <laughs> he has to be happy and then complain. Then I am happy. You are such a good person. You can't, you should not become ha happy. Why? Why did you become happy? Why it happens to you? This happiness. Nobody, nobody <laughs> sympathizes with you. Unhappiness you don't want to have. And others also come and sympathize with you. It's universal. That means what? That means this, the self that obtains during my happiness, during the experience of happiness, is the desired self, desirable self. That's what I want to be. The other one I don't want to be. This is perhaps the natural self. Up to this conclusion, you require uh, you require your own thinking, or you can get somebody's help is this kind of thinking, but this is born of thinking. And afterwards, that means if I am the problem, I am the solution. Then will come in your life other paperbacks available. The paperbacks, association, the interest, so then, perhaps this is what I am. I should know who I am. You understand now? So who I am is not my, is not my, my purushartha. It's not what I want. What I want is, I want to be free from being small. That means I have to be the whole. I have to be the limitless. That means there should be nothing other than me. So, it's a big issue. So, there, there you start the journey. This is what we say, Vridha Vyabhara. The elders in the society. There are people in the society who are seeking. The paperbacks are from them. So they are seeking, they have got some knowledge and then in India we have this seeking. Therefore there are sadhus who burn their boats and then search for this. We have a culture. In America I will be a hobo. Hobo. You have heard about hobo? No? Hobo means you have no you have no job, you have no bank balance, you have no family, and just you, you travel in freight trucks, no, freight uh, trains, without ticket. <laughs> the kind of hippie, he's called hobo. In America, suppose they ask me question, somebody asked me question, do you have a job? No. Do you have a family? No. Do you have bank balance? No. Have some inheritance or something? No. Oh, you are a hobo. <laughs> yes. <laughs> In India, same questions are asked, suppose. I say, no, no job. No money, no family. Oh, are you sadhu? <laughs> <laughs> difference. Can you see the difference? That gives rise. To 
seek. If the self is not acceptable to me, freedom from this non-acceptance is my goal. Perhaps that is possible only if the self is free from being limited. There is a knowledge available. That is what we say, Vedanta, the teaching, the Upanishad. It tells me I am the whole. Therefore, self-inquiry. Then, <coughs> see how much I have to cover. <laughs> I told you I don't have snap answers. That's okay. We have lots of time. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. No, I have limited time, but... <laughs> I think we've got to question two now. Many Western seekers come to India looking for enlightenment as if it is an experience. What is enlightenment? Is it very clear what I have told now? We don't seek experience. If you seek one more experience, then you have to interpret an experience. An experience is as good as you interpret it, how well you interpret it. It has to be understood. You can have the experience. We don't lack experience. See, one thing I'm telling you. See, you, I am seeing you, you are seeing me. This is one unit experience. In this unit experience, there is subject, there is object. This subject object is opposed to each other. This is duality. And this is going to be there all the time. If you resolve it for the time being, you don't become enlightened. <laughs> you can resolve subject to object in sleep it happens. In a moment, so it can be resolved. There is no subject to object. That's all. The head is empty. Empty head is not enlightened head. It's enlightened head. Okay? It's an empty head. <coughs> then what is enlightened? This subject object is, is true because there is one which is the subject which is also the object. That is enlightenment. That is knowledge. How that is possible? Because the subject is the knower. And the knower has got an object. That's all he can know. So what he can objectify, he knows. If the subject and the object are both one and the same, the person doesn't have a means of knowing, needs another means of knowing. That's what Vedanta is. That's why I, 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 uh, I say that we need to know certain basics before we seek anything. We need to know some basics. The basics are known, then our seeking is very well-directed, pronounced. Otherwise, it still remains uh, in darkness, we are groping, so. So we will uh, <coughs> look into this again. Are there any qualifications for enlightenment? Is practice necessary? If yes, what form do you advise? You know, yeah, a human being should become human first. Then only all this will come. Because you have to say, I am the whole, you have to discover, you have to know. So what is the qualification for any knowledge? You require qualification. 
any knowledge, a preparedness, certain preparedness, even suppose this is a child of a mathematician and mother also is a physicist, this fellow father is a mathematician, grandparents were all professors, there is no genetic skip, this boy is only three year old and now this boy two year old or three year old, the mathematician wants to teach him math, maths, arithmetic. Simple 5 plus 4, he can't make him understand what it is all about. Why? Certain preparedness. There's an age for everything. What time can prepare, nothing else can prepare. Then age. Age is a very important thing in this, at this level. Then is an adult. He has got a driver's license. <laughs> but that doesn't qualify him to study calculus. He must have some more preparation. He needs enough maths. Suppose he studies calculus, that doesn't mean he can understand everything that is there in physics, energy matter equation. That takes a certain background, then he can understand that also. Anything can be understood if the preparedness is there. Now, I am the whole, I have to understand. Both the subject and object. Whether the object is a micro or it is a, it is a micro object like a, an electron or it is the whole universe. Subject object, both are one, both come from the same. So that takes a lot of learning, lot of understanding, lot of, lot of clearance of mistakes also and confusions. So what are the qualifications for this? Is there a MSc necessary? Any academic qualification, we will say the person should be rational in thinking. Irrational conclusions should be seen as irrational. That capacity, whether you gain by your own experience, by your own thinking and some discipline, or by schooling, you gain that intellectual discipline. That's, uh, that's not negotiable. Because you are a rational being and you have to be rational. Nothing irrational. I can be above reason, but there is nothing unreasonable. Therefore, that is, uh, that is taken for granted, that qualification, simple right thinking. But then, as a human being, values, attitudes, dharma, giving, and uh, freedom from greed, freedom from insecurity, freedom from being judgmental, these are all uh, qualifications compassion, these are the qualifications required. That we say, viveka, vairagya, shamadama, uparati, titiksha, shraddha, samadhanam, mamakshutvam, amanitvam, adambitvam, ahimsa, kshantihi, arjivam, achari upasanam, like this. We have a list, <laughs> list of qualifications. All of them talk about one word in one word. So you, you grow into a human being. Means humaneness, consideration for others, no hurting others, compassion, 
giving, sharing, friendliness, being not judgmental, objective, dispassion, no exaggerated value, priority confusion is not there. So this is all uh, qualification. It's all said in so many words. Practice is involved because sometimes to be like that you have to fake it and make it. <laughs> See, if compassion is not there, you can't be compassionate. Even though compassion is not there, you can act compassionately. Love is not there, you can act lovingly. Act it out. So faking and making. You act it out as though you have love. Love will come. <laughs> One fellow hated somebody. Jealous and hated. And he didn't want to have this hatred. I told him, give this fellow daily one rose. Tell him that one Swami told me that I should, I should do this because I hate you. <laughs> Tell the truth, I hate you. And the day you got promotion, I hated you more. <laughs> and then I don't want this hatred. And I want to get rid of this hatred. Therefore, I, when I talked to Swami, Swami said, please give him a flower. Don't mistake me. And you please receive a flower for 48 days. That's a number. 48 days is a number for any particular vow. 48 days. Give daily morning you go. First you give him this way. <laughs> Oh, this Swami asked me to give this and so on. So you look at this way and give. The next day you will go. Look. Angle changes. Next day, next day. <laughs> and afterwards begin smile. Change. Huh? Fake it and make it. Act it out. It's practice. That's how you practice compassion, practice friendship, cultivate friendship, cultivate love, act lovingly, caring. Caring comes by acting caring, caringly. So you, you, you are, these are all your natural traits. It is all connected to your own wholeness, your own completeness, love, compassion, all this connected to your completeness. That's why they are desirable qualities. People don't know why it is so. Therefore, a lot of practices. Then before that, daily rituals, prayer, devotion. Because you have to bring in Ishwara in your life. The more Ishwara means more objective you are. That's a big uh, topic. And uh, these are all uh, preparation. The pursuit of knowledge goes along with this. And they require a teacher. Teacher also is important in this. Guru Meva Vigachet, Shrutriyam Brahmanishtam. So you have to, one has to go to a teacher who is well informed, who is a Srotriya, who is a teacher, who himself had a teacher, and that person had a teacher. 
because there is a certain methodology involved in this. So that's the, that's the secret also. Secret in the sense, the methodology is never handed over by words. It grows upon you under the teacher. Like Indian music also. Can never be taught writing. You can't write it out. It has to grow upon you over a period of time. The teacher teaches, but the style, the whole nuances, and all this grow upon you. Teaching methodology is very important in this because it is already you. So the methodology is very important. Question six is very interesting for me about Monanasa and the mind. World is to be destroyed. Mind is to be destroyed. Anything to be destroyed is real. Unless the world is real, you don't need to destroy. If it is real, you cannot destroy. What is real cannot be destroyed. What cannot be destroyed is real. What is real cannot be destroyed. If you destroy it, then there will be something left over. Why? Because nothing is totally destroyed. There is no question of total destruction of anything. Matter cannot be destroyed. Energy cannot be destroyed. This is all what world is. So what we can destroy? Therefore, to say that the world is to be destroyed is, is not totally right, but there may be some meaning in when, when somebody says, so we are supposed to know. Somebody says he means something. We have to understand what is that meaning. That is what I say. So there is no literal destruction. The world is, if it is real, it cannot be destroyed. If it is not real, it need not be destroyed. So, right. <laughs> understand right. that. Yeah. yeah. Now you say, this is a shirt. Let, uh, let us read with the shirt. This is a shirt. And the shirt thinks that I am a shirt, suppose. The shirt has a human mind, self-conscious, self-judging, and it says, I am a shirt. I wish I were a kurta. <laughs> <laughs> then I say, see, you have to realize the self to the shirt. And the shirt says how to realize the self. The self is told, you must destroy your mind. You must destroy the shirt and the shirt world. The world of fabrics. <laughs> then you will realize. What will you realize? Yeah, the shirt as it cannot be dismissed as non-existent. It cannot be said also it is existent. Why? Because the shirt is fabric. You can't imagine a shirt without thinking of fabric. The weight of the shirt is the weight of fabric. The quality of the shirt is the quality of the fabric. The touch of shirt is the shirt of fabric. The fabric is silk, is silken shirt. If it is cotton, cotton shirt. Where is the shirt? It is not on the fabric, it is not sitting on the fabric. It is not besides the fabric. It is not inside the fabric. The shirt is useful. It is, cannot be dismissed as non-existent. It does not self-exist. And its being is the fabric. Therefore, shirt is mithya. It draws its being from what is there. What is there is fabric, and it draws its being from the fabric. Fabric also is mithya. 
Yod is Satyam. The reality is Yod. Yod is also Mithya. The fibers are Satyam. Fibers are Mithya. The molecules are Satyam. The molecule is Mithya. Atoms are Satyam. Atom is Mithya. The particle is Satyam. The particle is Mithya. The content of the particle is Satyam. Whatever it is. Therefore, shirt is just mithya. And therefore, the shirt need not dismiss, destroy the shirt to realize that I am the fabric. <laughs> so, wrong expression of words. And it will put you on a trip. You will find the world doesn't go. Suppose I say the world is to be destroyed, you will be trying to destroy the world and you will find you cannot destroy the world and mind should go. Mind should, why should it go? The mind doesn't stay, it has no staying power. Mind is thoughts. If it is thoughts, a thought doesn't stay more than a moment. It's wonderful because the mind is great because it doesn't stay. You can see motion because the mind doesn't stay. <clears throat> Suppose the mind, the thought moves slowly. Suppose you see my hand moving, you will be, you will see my hand coming like this. Like in some animations. In India, they, someone made uh, uh, these animations of Ramayana. Rama goes to the forest. <laughs> See the smoothness. Why? Because the mind is momentary. What is to? Why should you destroy? It destroys itself. <laughs> what, what mind has done to you? The mind has nothing to do with the problem. The problem is centered on I. Mind is not I. Mind is I. In fact, I am not the mind. Everything is I. I am free from everything. This is the truth. In this, this is the truth to be recognized as such. Therefore, this Mano Nasha and uh, the Drishya Nasha is I. It's a particular prakriya, it's a methodology of turning the person towards, towards oneself, towards himself. Of, yeah. It's a bit loud for the recording. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and... <coughs> And therefore, that's only a method to turn a person to, uh, to oneself, to the self. Turn one's attention to the self. So you, you withdraw from Drishya, from the world, you withdraw. From the world of objects, you objectify and you, they, you, you turn towards yourself, the self. So some kind of a, a prakriya, some kind of a method. And uh, this method we use only to find a way to, dis to separate the I from drishya, from what you objectify. So what you objectify the self is not what you objectify. So it's a methodology. It's not mind, manonasha. Mind is not an issue. Therefore, if mind has to be destroyed, then, then uh, after destruction, how the person is going to talk? <laughs> Swami, this is a very important point because, in, as you know, in the Buddhist tradition, 
they're all sitting looking for no mind. No, this is a so when uh, when they say no mind, so what do they mean? The, the thought free mind. When they say no mind, thought free mind. A thought free mind is an empty mind. Not a destroyed mind. Yeah, not destroyed mind. <coughs> if it is destroyed mind, you don't have a, can't have a thought afterwards. They are working for a no thought means they are finished. Whole life is gone. Because there will be thought always. Only in sleep there is no thought. No particular thought. In dream there is thought. In waking there will be thought. When you look out there is thought. When you close your eyes there is thought. <laughs> when you can Stop thinking. Why should you stop thinking? Problem is wrong thinking. No thinking doesn't solve the problem. Wrong thinking solves the problem. A fellow commits a mistake in simple arithmetic. And then the teacher says, it is your mind. Therefore, he wants to have a no mind so that he will have arithmetic knowledge. <laughs> Wrong thinking is a problem. The whole thing is that there is a problem, is the problem. We are solving a, a, a problem that doesn't exist. If it exists, you can't solve it. If it doesn't exist, then you should see that there doesn't exist. I'm not a problem. So it's entirely a different approach. You require a means of knowledge. You don't have a means of knowledge. It has to come from outside. It is an epistemological problem. That is why this Neo-Vedanta, this modern spirituality, is all moving in circles. They are, they are I would say they are innocent. They don't, innocent. Innocent. They don't know what they are what they are about. Too innocent. Become big people, that's all. Just words. What does it mean? So, the, 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 you are lost in the ocean of bliss. Who is lost? Who is lost? And who comes and reports that? They give examples. A salt dog enters into the ocean to measure the depth of the ocean, can the salt dog measure the depth? It gets dissolved. They will finish. There is only ocean. Who is to tell that? <laughs> salt dog is already gone. Who is to tell? This kind of examples are very arresting the attention of people. Fascinating. Doesn't contain any grain of truth. I'm a self-evident being. You see me because you have your eyes. Otherwise there is no way of my being here known to you. You have to use your eyes. You have to use your ears. You are behind the eyes and ears. The mind and you. You are behind the eyes and ears. And your eyes and ears are the means of knowing. Therefore Swami is. Anything is, is arrived at like that. 
And then what do you see? Whether it is the Swami Dayananda, it has to be verified. Because there is one look-alike. He is not Dayananda, he is Ishwarananda. Some people mistake me for Ishwarananda. Some people mistake him for Dayananda. We meet now and then and then exchange our namaskars. <laughs> You know, he gets salutations, my salutations he gets, his salutations I get. <laughs> I tell him I have got seven of them. And he has to give me seven hundred at least. <laughs> we settle account. We are mistaken. Therefore, you have to, this is called valid means of knowledge. So, you have to employ your means of knowledge to know anything that is or is not also. Is not also has to be known to you. That is why there is no emptiness. Emptiness is known to you. There is no emptiness. They have to spend all their lifetime. They can't even be free. That is why if you ask a, 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 this, this meditator, this meditator, you ask him. So somebody says, I love you. I love you. Because he should not move. I love you. <laughs> tension. So much tension. That kind of love is so tension. <laughs> Tension will love. I love you. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> See, we pass in our meditation. You just you look at your mind. Look at your nose. What will happen? Looking at all these, what happened? Enlighten? Whole day look at the mind afterwards, you lose your linear thinking. Afterwards, dull. Every year, every day you do meditation like that, you become duller and duller and duller. <laughs> then afterwards you can't think. Useless. It is good to just to be aware. That is a good good thing. That much alone. That much alone. Alertness. They are not fidgeting. And then I, I saw one Swami talking. Yeah, there are five senses. The world, all the time he talks, what he does and what he talks, there is no connection. Good on Delhi. What are you such a Brahman. Should be useful to him. A certain alertness, being conscious about what you do, what you say. We emphasize on cheshta, your cheshta, yukta cheshta. Anything that you do, consciously you do. Especially walk. Whatever you talk, Make sure you have a topic to talk, number one. <laughs> number two, the person whom you talk to, is he willing to listen to you? Number two. <laughs> Thirdly, you and your pressure. Your pressure to talk, something. That is third. You come third. That is how Sanskrit is. Prathama Purushaha. The translation is first person. But Prathama Purusha is third person. The topic. The topic is Prathama Purusha. In English, third person is, is third person is uh, in, 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 in Sanskrit Prathama Purusha. 
इंग्लिश थर्ड पर्सन इन संस्कृत फर्स्ट पर्सन प्रथम फर्स्ट पुरुष पर्सन फर्स्ट पर्सन इन संस्कृत ट्रांसलेशन ऑफ प्रथम पुरुष इज फर्स्ट पर्सन एंड दट इज थर्ड पर्सन टॉपिक टॉपिक इज नंबर वन देन मध्यम पुरुष द वन होम यू आर टॉकिंग टू between the topic and you this fellow is caught ni madhyam purusha please see whether this person is interested in your talking yeah when he asked you how do you do don't start from your first marriage on so this is <laughs> just a question how do you do I want to meet you. How do you do? You have to say how do you do and go. That is second consideration. First consideration whether you have a topic worthwhile. The second consideration whether the person is interested in listening to you. And third person. Third consideration, of course. is yourself you got a topic and then you have a pressure to talk also that is antima purusha uttama purusha means antima purusha last the last person <laughs> first person topic second person the listener the third person is the talker is asking because they want you to have a discipline over talking so loose talking is not allowed so this is all called yukta chesta yukta har vikarasya yukta cheshtasya karmasu yukta swapnav bodasya yogo bhavati dukkah this knowledge is possible the knowledge that removes dukkha this sadness pain the seeking centered on oneself dukkha yoga ha bhavati that yoga of knowledge will take place for whom युक्ताहार विहार से द वन हुज फूड इन टेक इज मॉडरेट द वन हु इज वेरी कॉन्शियस अबाउट ऑल एक्टिविटीज एंड युक्त चेष्टा एंड हु डजेंट डजेंट वेस्ट one doesn't waste one's energy in fidgeting yukta swapnava bodhasya the one who doesn't sleep too much and the one who has no sleep <laughs> moderate sleep and alert during the waking hours so not sleeping and then during the whole day you the fellow is sleepy they don't accept that so that's accepted nothing more therefore we don't neither it is possible to destroy mind because it doesn't stay for you to do any destruction work it doesn't stay it's momentary which they say but this will say that kranika vijnanam if it is momentary then why do you want to control that who will control the controller also kranikam he is also momentary the full the whole 
thing is wrong thinking. You are self-evident. You exist, that is why you can arrive at my existence. If your existence is to be arrived at, then to whom it becomes evident? The existence of the self becomes evident to whom? Everything becomes evident to the self. The self is self-existence, existence of the self is evident to the self. That is what is called self-evident. Now, we are removing from the self-evident self all wrong notions. That is called self-knowledge. And recognize what it is also. First negate what it is not, then recognize what it is. The negation itself that will be arrived at. Because the negation is total. Therefore, we will, any part of the self which is available for objectification is not the self. Any part of the self that is available for objectification is not the self. It is not self. That is the first stage. The second stage is not self, is self. Whereas the self is, of course, not self. Is not, not self. That is why there is a not self. The not self is self. The self is not not self. In other words, a thought is myself. I am not the thought. The I thought, as well as this thought. Vṛttayastvakam vṛttyama śrutaha vṛttayo mano vidyakam manaha ahamayam kuto bhavati chinvataha ayipatatyakam nijavicharanam This is all uh, Ramana. Vṛttayastvakam vṛttyama śrutaha vṛttayo mano vidyakam manaha Ahamayam kuto bhavati chinvataha Ayipatatyakam nija vicharanam Ahaminasha bhajyakamakantaya Spurati hritsvayam paramapurnasat Idamakam pada bhikyaman vakam Ahamilina ke pyalaya sattaya Vigrahendriya All his own verses. Vṛttayastvakam vṛttimāśrutāha All thoughts form the mind. Vṛttayaha. And they are centered on I thought. Because it's all my thoughts. Vṛttayastvakam vṛttimāśrutāha Aham vṛttim I thought. Āśrutāha centered on our thoughts. Therefore, the real mind is Aham Vritti. This is his thesis. This is a thesis. Therefore, all thoughts are centered on I thought. If thoughts are mind, and if the thoughts are based upon I thought, then I thought is the mind. And then when you inquire into the I thought, the thought goes away, only vastu is there. Ahamayam kuto bhavati chinvataha ayipatatyakam nija vicharanam. This is self-inquiry. When you begin to inquire what is this I, with the help of the teaching, that part of it we have to add there. Chinvataha is there for a proper Inquiring person, this ahankara, the ego, the inquirer himself resolves into the self-evident being. Who is going to tell? He is, he is the whole. 
gives everything. He tells later. Aham, aham inasha bhajya kamakantaya paramapurna sat. Nija vicharanam. This is, in the, in the if, you, if you analyze, if you inquire what exactly is this aham, you discover this aham kara, the knower, is himself is is mithya is dependent upon known as well as knower both depend upon one whole purna one whole sat which self exists that is called whole both subject and object are one and the same truth that is the whole whole means don't look around <laughs> Whatever you see in front, and then yourself, both are whole. The hearer and heard, the seer and seen, whole. That is why any small thing can also make you happy. You see, you see some microbes through the through the, the microscope, and this fellow is doing research, and he was suspecting some microbes there. She's a microbes ecstatic. Ah! Ah! Hey! Oh! All this. Call microbe on him. And then he was looking at the sky and, and then I want to find out something. And then, then also it is the same. Ah! Oh! And all that. <laughs> Subject to object. Whole. Whether it is a micro or it is a cosmos, it's one one reality subject of it. That's what he says. In that very place where this knower resolves, the self-evident being reveals itself as Paramapurna Sat in keeping with the teaching again. All these words are important there. I mean, one becomes the meaning of the teaching. Because it is self-evident. All the notions all drop off. That is the nature of knowledge, self-knowledge. So, you can understand why I am allergic to some <laughs> expressions and some forms and, yeah. Number seven, perhaps? This is another thesis, the Vasana thesis. In the teaching tradition itself, we have got uh, mention of Vasana. And uh, the Vasana is the orientation. The orientation. The subject-object orientation. And uh, I will be happy only when I have these things. There's an orientation. By vichara, we remove that. By inquiry. That is called Vishaya Vasana. Then there is Deha Vasana. I am the body Vasana. Because you are born with that. It will be there always. Body I am. I am not the body that has to be cultivated. By contemplation, vichara, inquiry. That's where the practice is involved, contemplation. Deha Vasana goes. Then Shastra Vasana. I should study this, I should study that and all. That is postponing the issue. And these are the three Vasanas we talk about. 
any other vasana they talk about that is all wrong our problem is mistake not vasana self centered mistake it's a correction of error what is it we are working for we have to know that is why vedanta traditional vedanta is different from all these new approaches traditional vedanta is absolutely cognitive because you are the whole you will never become the whole you don't lack experience of the whole whatever you experience is the whole there is no such thing wholeness will appear there is no popping up whole <laughs> once or if one has a traditional teacher the upanishad says acharya van purusho ved the one who has got a traditional teacher knows what it is all about it's 100% sure <laughs> huh kut <laughs> acharya van purusha ved ved means knows and therefore it is a question of permanent and all that doesn't come cuz is you <laughs> not subject to time you didn't gain anything you only drop the notions <laughs> so already you if it is a gain it can be last only this some of this Vasanas are talked about only for a person in the process who is learning, who is preparing himself, so gain the knowledge proper. Therefore, these vasanas are talked about threefold vasanas: object vasana, the body, mind, sense complex vasana. I am only this much vasana. and then shastra vasana i have to study this study that vasana you have to study only one thing <laughs> and that is all about you and that is not study that is employing a means of knowledge good teacher when you study upanishad you are studying yourself is a mirror word mirror so that person one who doesn't have any more wrong notion is called jivan mukta living is free so living implies body mind sense complex that mean thinking hunger thirst normal life <laughs> yeah in fact the difference between the jiva and the jivan mukta is the other person normally abnormal this one is normally normal okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> there is the only difference normally abnormal means everybody else is confused therefore is okay <laughs> 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 the judging person also is equally confused no problem that way we sympathize with each other <laughs> nine it appears essential to meet a guru that also is over guru and surrender to that guru who is the guru what is the guru's role how to recognize the true guru <laughs> this what is just now i'm telling guru is the teacher the mahavakya upadesha karta guru the one who teaches the mahavakya the the equation you are 
यू आर द होल यू आर ईश्वर दैट सेंटेंस रेज इज कॉन्ट्रोडिक्शन बिकॉज यू आर एन इंडिविजुअल ईश्वरा इज ऑल ईश्वरा इज ऑल नोइंग यू आर स्मॉल नोइंग हाउ आई कैन बी ईश्वर दिस दिस कॉन्ट्रोडिक्शन is raised and then resolved because that status of ishwaratvam the status of being ishwara and the status of being individual jiva limited jiva both the status are of the same order of reality that order of reality doesn't exist independently that order of reality is the absolute reality whereas the absolute reality is free from that like the fabric is not shirt shirt is fabric therefore you are the same if i tell a wave you are the ocean the wave will ask how can i be the ocean then i will say you are born of ocean sustained by ocean you go back to ocean you are never separate from the ocean that is true i am a part of the ocean i cannot be the ocean hmm i am part of the ocean i cannot be the ocean then what is ocean let us try to find out ocean where is ocean what is there is water correct water 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 everywhere then what is wave again the top of the wave is water middle of which is water all of wave is water there is only water therefore that is the atma of the wave atma of the ocean is only h2o The wave has to know that. The wave cannot know because it is not; it doesn't have a self-evident self. <laughs> And therefore, there is no problem also. If it has a human mind, there will be self-evident self. It can know. Then it will be. it has to know it will be immediately say i am i am the self which is self revealing and reveals everything and the whole so the one who teaches this is the guru ye shrotriyam brahmanishtam guru meva bhi gachhe go to a teacher who is very well informed who has teachers upstarts don't go to leave them alone do namaskar to them and leave them alone don't learn from them they can inspire you if somebody says i have not studied anywhere <laughs> you can say yes, thank you <laughs> <laughs> never quote an exception always quote the rule the exception is always there to every rule there must be some reasons and all that we can explain all that so and can he make you see then he is a teacher the boy you should first check up with the people whether the person is is very well informed traditional teacher who knows the methodology of teaching that can be verified then afterwards exposure in the exposure they will discover so the lineage is important yeah yeah that's why there is always a lineage yeah. is very important they will ask you are the disciple of whom 
not all the time you have one teacher, you have sometimes many teachers. So we tell all of them, Sya. In my case, it was like that. So, so we trace all the sources of hell. At every stage, somebody is necessary. Somebody helps us. So we have different stages in this. Unless one gets the right teacher at the right time. So. So, I mean, does, does the teacher come when I'm ready or do I look for the teacher when I'm ready? They say that. They say if you are ready, teacher will come. That's not correct. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you are ready, you will spot the right teacher. You won't get carried away. If one is half-baked, then he easily gets carried away. You go by the length of beard. <laughs> Traditionally, devotees had tremendous devotion to the Guru. We say something about devotion in the pursuit of awakening. It is it's, the word devotion is, I don't know what the meaning is. It's, it's a very funny word. But it's a trust in the capacity of the teacher to make me see. That trust. Because the teacher is, the teaching is a means of knowing. As one teaches, one has to recognize, because I am talking of a thing that is there already. I am not talking of an object beyond me and uh, or within me, it's me. And therefore, I can uh, expect from the teaching immediate knowledge. And therefore, as I use my eyes, I have to use the teaching. Prabhana is a means of knowing. Suppose I say, look at this banana. <laughs> look at this banana. Yeah. The green banana. <laughs> you will say, what has happened to Swami? <laughs> Suppose you wish the Swami was right. Because you want the Swami to be right. You have not come here to prove me wrong, I assume. You want the Swami to be right, but you can't oblige your own thinking. Because Swami is not right. Why? I have no choice. You have no choice. You don't will this to be banana or orange. It is orange. Your will has no place. There is knowing. Will doesn't play a role in knowing. Eyes are open. Object is there in front, lighted properly. Sight takes place. If it is orange, it is orange. If it is banana, it is banana. And suppose I say, <laughs> look at the bunch of oranges. <laughs> For a change, okay? For a change. <laughs> what choice do you have? You don't have a choice. 
and therefore you surrender totally to your eyes correct your surrender your atma ego manaha everything is just at the altar of your eyes that's how knowledge takes place the teacher is like that while teaching takes place there is no teacher or teaching only teaching is there teacher goes only the topic and you see the topic while teaching takes place and the topic is you this is what we say surrender is not authority surrender to an authority as a problem also you are only it's a means of knowing and therefore total trust in the teaching and one who handles the teaching both kal shraddha shastrasya guruvakyasya satya buddhi shraddha there is no word in english for shraddha the teaching and the one who handles the teaching in both that it is valid it is true i have to know it that kind of a surrender let's call shraddha and because knowledge is involved then questions are allowed one can raise questions one can get the answers that's all allowed because knowledge is involved but shraddha benefit of doubt is given to the teaching and the teacher you don't dismiss if you don't understand there's a there's called shraddha <coughs> seekers of often have curious ideas about the enlightened state please describe your typical day day and how you perceive the world <laughs> suppose i see you from the beginning of you then if the revolution is true then i should see all the people as monkeys correct <laughs> what is this i just see you as you are what is is see no projected values no judgment no projected values that's what what is that is what is truth what the truth is these are all people and you take them as they are at this moment no judgment non judgmental and objective totally objective they have a certain reality and the reality is evident self evident therefore there is no real contention there is only subject object as though subject object it's, it's a it's all uh, as do in a three dimensional film you know you wear you wear goggles and go and sit there three dimensional movie have you seen that ha ah, somebody it starts with a brawl brawl in the bar somebody throws an orange and somebody throws a throws a soda bottle <laughs> it comes directly to you you have gone there with a bag of popcorn on your lap <laughs> and 
you have gone there for an reverse really because you you duck into your popcorn <laughs> and then then you remember it is theater then you want to know whether somebody has seen you <laughs> the one one who is there but uh, you know luckily that will also duck <laughs> so you have a break okay you are relieved <laughs> we are in good company <laughs> this will take place for some time correct then afterwards you know that it is no three dimensional the three dimensional then after we begin to enjoy relax and enjoy but never lose sight of <laughs> the truth of the three dimensional mood that's what it is Can I ask something from me? Um <clears throat> we've been sitting together for some time now. And from the very beginning it felt very energetic here. And the words were streaming. And um the question is um who speaks? Who speaks? Yes. I speak. <laughs> <laughs> I speak. The speaker is I. The speaker is I, but I am not the speaker. The difference, the difference must be seen. When you want to say touch wood, what do you do? Touch wood. Then the wood is the table, but the table is not. No, table is wood, but wood is not the table. That is why you can touch the table. handle of your chair and say touch you <laughs> correct so b is a a is not b like on the stage a person playing a role the role is the person the speaker is i the role is the person the role undergoes all changes according to the script the role is a beggar the actor plays the role of a beggar but and all the way through he knows that he is not a beggar he is going to be richer by being a beggar for some time he knows he is not b actor is not beggar beggar is actor i am the speaker Otherwise, there is dissociation. Because this is modern Vedanta again a problem. See, beggar is the role, is the is the role, and it is not separate from the actor. The beggar's body is actor's body. Beggar talks, actor talks. But there is space between the beggar and the actor. The space is not physical. the space is self awareness awareness of self identity even while talking begging he knows that he is doing well <laughs> while crying he knows that he is doing well because he is not b b is a that is the truth This is the secret of Vedanta. This is the secret of the teaching. This is not known. That's why they will ask this question: Who is the speaker? If you are in that bliss, how can you talk? <laughs> <laughs> All bunker. All these are foolishness. Sometimes it's said that. the enlightened sage is like a radio you know that the words are coming from uh the only yeah that is true that is true when well, the only topic the only topic yeah deal with the topic yeah. you can say that but still there is language cannot come because there is language involved there are anecdotes 
All these come from his own individual knowledge. You know. Buddhi comes from Buddhi. Only the thing you can say that, you see, if one doesn't know oneself, then B is A, A is B. Therefore, there will be agenda. Here there is no agenda. B is A, A is not B. That awareness makes the whole thing free. Yeah. yeah during this last uh, yeah. hours, it's like talking to nobody. Yeah. Nobody is talking. Right? Yeah, yeah. Talking to nobody. That is not true. <laughs> not true. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to all the people. So, nobody talking means I'll be in the <laughs> I'm talking to people in a way that you can understand. If I talk to some of my old students, I will talk differently. I will talk entirely differently, which you will never understand. <laughs> but I'm talking sense there also. There are levels of talking. And therefore, uh, I'm talking to you. So there's nothing wrong. You're not talking to nobody, that's not correct. In fact, you should respect your audience and you talk to that person <laughs> with love and care. <laughs> <laughs> not to non entity. <laughs> so. Uh, only one question left now. <clears throat> you have given a profound discourse on awakening. When you would meet someone with a passion for awakening, what would your, would your short advice be? <laughs> you know, this is all uh, Being alive to what is, what is, what is is truth. Even what you see is also truth. What is is what you see, what you know, that's called what is. It's all truth. What is is truth. In this, what is the truth and what is what is it that draws its peculiar existence from the truth? So this is the whole awakening. So awakening is not anything special. It's not that sitting under a tree awakening takes place. <laughs> sitting under a tree awakening is after some time you will get a drop on your head. <laughs> and that is the awakening. So then the best awakening is, enlightenment is, Sitting under, don't sit under a tree, <laughs> because there are birds sitting above. Therefore, you will have heavenly drops, <laughs> which are not very good. So that is the enlightenment. Never sit under a tree. <laughs> yeah. Awakening is seeing more than what I see. Seeing more about myself, at the same time, more about what I see, that's awakening. Being awake to what is. That is one sentence. Have a good lunch. Thank you. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti.